Hi, my name is Ian Furso. I'm a virtual production supervisor and the founder of VP Toolkit. Before we started working on larger productions, it all began with a projector and a bootcamped iMac that we used to do our first virtual production tests. I thought that this proved that virtual production could actually be done at any level. In this video series, I'm going to try and show you the techniques that I use on larger productions but at an indie level so that you can use virtual production in your projects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a virtual production studio with a projector and a laptop. This is for indie filmmakers, streamers, and anybody that wants to learn the fundamentals of virtual production. So here's a list of what I'm using in this video. I'm just gonna pop it on the screen here. So I'll be using the BP Toolkit plugin, but I'm also going to show you how to do it with just Unreal Engine. Let's get started. So we're going to discard changes again and get into our new session. We can see that we are in here with an editor and just to confirm that we are live. I'll just move the stage a little bit. Uh, so the way that we're going to monitor our frame rate is with stage monitor. Stage monitor, you want to make sure that the plugin is enabled. Stage monitor in your plugins. You want to go to window and then virtual production and then stage monitor. I keep mine down here. So until you activate it, uh, it does pretty much nothing. Go down to the bottom right here hit start or activate you should be able to see both instances of unreal showing up and then now you should be able to see their frame rate or at least their average frame rate you can see that my render node is getting 0.36 frames a second that is not very good so while you're running two instances of unreal on a single machine like this which is generally not recommended you're going to have to use alt tab to switch between them. And then when we switch to the end display instance, you should see a pretty great increase in your frame rate. So right now we're rendering at nine frames a second. So let's do a couple things to our project and to our stage configuration uh, to optimize for performance here. So the first thing I'm going to do is alt tab back to my editor. So first, I know that in this environment, if we go to our post-processing volume, now there's a lot of lights in this environment. Generally, this, this would be way more lights than I would recommend in an environment, but by the time we're done optimizing, we won't have to remove any of these lights. So let's go to the post-processing volume, and if you scroll all the way down, uh, first off, you wanna make sure that you don't have bloom enabled and it's set to zero you want to lock your exposure of your post-processing volume by locking it i mean setting both the min and the max ev100 to one this makes it so that one will become its default uh, right now we're at negative four which you can also control in the frustum widget up here we want to shut off chromatic aberration by turning it on and setting it to zero. We want to shut off lens flare by turning it on and setting it to zero. And we're going to shut off the vignette by enabling it and setting it to zero. We want to make sure that there's no major adjustments being done to our environment that we might not actually want with this setup. The way that artists make manipulations to the color of an environment is different than what we need to use when we're filming a screen with a camera. So now let's go in and change some lumen settings. So this environment was originally designed to look really good and to run on a more performant machine. So we're going to have to change some of the settings. So first we want to see if lumen is enabled. If not, you might want to enable this or disable it to see if you have Lumen on by default. And then we want to go to the global Lumination settings. And they're all set to four right now, which will look really good, but we need to get some of our frame rate back. So we can set all of these to one. 
I'm going to tab over to the project and see what our current frame rate is. So we're still only getting eight frames a second, but that did give us a little bit of performance. Uh, so you want to start with your environment. Generally, if you're on a more performant machine, that might be all you would need. So now we're going to change some configuration settings of end display. So let's go into our end display config. And the first thing we're going to do is turn off our outer viewport. This is what is outside of the frustum. And on a small projector setup like this, we're not using it for environment lights. So we can stop it from rendering, save those frames. So I'm going to click on my end display config and then in the details panel, select freeze viewports. So now if we take a look at what that did, we're now getting 17 to 19 frames a second. So it's getting better, but we're not quite there. One thing to think about is the resolution of your inner frustum. So that's the resolution of the view that your camera sees. Now, since we're using 1920 by 1080 screen, our inner frustum should be pretty much 1920 by 1080, as long as our camera is covering the whole screen. Now, if you had a small screen and it was just part of a larger setup and the camera saw much bigger than it, you may want to have a higher resolution. Or if you're on a larger wall, you want it to match the pixel pitch and the resolution of what your camera is going to see. So this can change between different focal lengths and different distances to your LED wall. So we can do that by clicking on our end display config and then select your ICVFX camera. You can scroll down and then go to configuration, custom frame size, and then we're going to enable custom frame size. Right now it's set to 2K. We're going to set that to 1920 by 1080. Now I'm going to save all to make sure that those changes go over to our render. So once you save, it might take a second to reset the end display instance. So now once it's reset, we're going to tab back over to it. Now we're starting to get some frame rates that are actually going to be usable. So we're at 26, 27. So there's one more thing that I'm going to show you that will help with this. So if you're running two instances of Unreal on a single machine, you want to make sure that this instance of Unreal isn't rendering anything that requires a lot of performance from the GPU. So this view that we have here looks very good and it makes it so that we can make educated decisions on lighting or changes to our environment. But let's see what happens when we set this to unlit. So now we just have shapes and we no longer see the lighting of the environment. Let's alt tab back over to our end display render and see what kind of frames we're getting. Now we're getting around 30 frames a second. That's good. I'm going to try one more thing. I can see that the end display render is previewing. So that means that this editor instance of Unreal is previewing what end display is going to see. So we can turn that off by going over to our end display config and then just searching for preview. And then you'll see editor preview. Let's try shutting that off. You'll no longer see what your stage sees. So sometimes this is a trade-off. If you have enough performance or you've properly separated your machine so that you have a controller machine and a rendering machine, then there should be no problem looking at your environment with the proper lighting and what end display we'll see. So let's go back over to our environment and see what kind of frames we're getting. So you can now see that our virtual character is no longer stuttering and he moves smoothly. So now once you add camera tracking to this, you should be able to get a correct parallax that pretty much matches up with your frame rate. This is also how you can optimize on larger stages, but I would heavily recommend going into the environment and optimizing there first because everything that we just did was a subtle sacrifice of resolution or other workflow tools that could have been really useful, like being able to see our environment. That's why it's important that if you're doing this at a professional level, that you make sure that your stage is set up properly with multiple machines. Now that we've optimized the stage settings as much as we can so that we can get the environment running properly, I would probably remove a bunch of lights or separate them onto different levels so that you can turn them off when you're not using them. So let's make sure that we save these settings now that we've optimized this environment. So I'm going to save all. I'm going to go to revision control and persist. Select make files writable. 
and then hit persist. Now we'll just bring it down and then back up so you can see the process. We're gonna make sure that we go to another session. We'll just go through the process of restarting that. Before we rerun our instances of Unreal and have them join the multi-user server, we wanna make sure that we create a new session so that they won't be joining the same session that we had before. I'm Ian Fursa with VP Toolkit. And if you like this content, please subscribe to our channel. We also offer virtual production services and make sure to check out our plugin. It's a real lifesaver on set. Uh, no. Now go film something. Film something cool. Tag us. And I'll see you in the next one.